sky replacement can kind of be a superpower when you're editing photos. No matter how well you plan your shoot, if you show up and the weather's not cooperating, a great photo can turn out to feel kind of empty and flat. And to do it well, for professional commercial photographers, it used to be technically really challenging, or you could do it for Instagram on an app, and it would come out looking fake and cheesy. But now, Photoshop has made it simple to do a very high-quality, professional-level sky replacement, and I'm gonna show you how. And do you notice I'm working on a brand new machine today? This is the Razorblade 15 Advance. This video is sponsored by NVIDIA Studio. We're gonna be showing some of the ways that this GPU can accelerate Photoshop and get your creative work done way faster. My wife and I run a production company together and being able to offer both photos and videos to clients that are shot by the same team at the same time is a huge asset. There's a few common reasons for replacing the sky. Sometimes, it's completely overcast. It's just white or gray up there, looks boring. Sometimes it's all blue. There's just no clouds and you wanna add a bit more texture back into the photo. In our case here, we just couldn't get the exposure of the subject bright enough to match the sky. So even though we had a big reflector while we're shooting Anya, trying to bounce it in there and even out the light a bit, it still wasn't enough. The clouds were way brighter and we couldn't recover them in post. If we switch our background in Photoshop to white, you can see the problem here. The edges of the image disappear into the pure white of the interface. Even if I try to lower that exposure, there's just, there's nothing there. Those, those whites are gone. And like I said, sky replacement is super easy. All you do is go to edit, sky replacement. And with just a few clicks, this looks surprisingly good. I mean, it's pretty fake. We're gonna make it look realistic in just a moment, but first, let's talk about my new computer for a sec. This NVIDIA Studio laptop is the Razorblade 15 Advanced, and it's got the amazing GeForce RTX 3070 inside. There are a ton of ways that modern creative software is being written to take advantage of these GPUs, and often it's done hand in hand with NVIDIA to make sure that it's completely optimized. The NVIDIA Studio driver is created to provide the highest stability and reliability for the software that you're using every day. All this technology still feels really new and exciting, but it's only going further down this path of more machine learning, more AI, and a good GPU really speeds those tools up. And there's a lot of tasks that a CPU can't handle, and an integrated graphics card can be painfully slow. So let's take a new feature in Photoshop as an example, super resolution. The photo of the clouds we're gonna use was shot at 16 millimeters, and the photo of Anya was shot at 24. That means we need to zoom in the clouds photo. So we're gonna enhance it, and this super resolution feature uses machine learning to kind of magically make it twice as big and look way better than other enlargement algorithms. So with that AI being accelerated with the tensor cores on the RTX 3070, you're effectively giving your camera more megapixels. And there's more than 30 GPU accelerated effects inside of Photoshop. I'm sure we all know that feeling of just waiting for your photos to get done. And if you can move that along faster, you're just able to edit more images and get your work done more quickly. Today, we're just looking at Photoshop, but this applies to the whole Adobe Creative Suite, also DaVinci Resolve, or obviously any 3D modeling software you use. So scroll down, click the link in the description below and find out how NVIDIA Studio laptops can free you to create easier and faster. All right, and now let's edit our photo. So I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna change my background back to dark gray and go to edit and sky replacement. Now, you don't really need me to tell you anything to get some half decent results in here, but you, there's some refinement to do. This is all right, but we could do much better. We'll start by looking at the clouds. So I've got something kind of dramatic here, and I don't recommend choosing something that's very different from what was actually happening in the scene. Photoshop comes with a few presets. Uh, I bet this one is gonna work really well. And just off the bat, it's looking pretty fake. So let's move some of these around. First of all, we definitely wanna make it brighter. That's often something that I'm moving up. The scale would be if this was on a wider lens, so we would make it larger or further back, basically whatever it takes to match the perspective that you have in your photo. And then lighting adjustments and color adjustments, this tries to match the rest of the photo to the tone of the sky. We don't really need that right now because the source photo is totally clean and we just had sunny skies. And at the bottom here where it says output to, you always wanna make sure it's on new layer because you have the most flexibility to modify your settings after. And now this looks, half decent, but this is a default sky from Adobe and everyone else could be using it. So make sure you have something a little more custom. All right, we have a beautiful, perfect sky today. So 
We wouldn't need to replace this guy. Instead, let's take some photos to use later in future photos so we can replace those skies. Now there's a bunch of things you want to match between your source photo and your sky photos. You want to have similar time of day, kind of similar lighting direction. They shouldn't be completely different, otherwise the fake sky will really give itself away, and that's not what we're going for here. And in the description, I'll include some links to download different clouds you can use. Here are some of the ones that we shot on this day, which were perfect. This is so good. And I've already selected the one I want to use. To load it in up here where it says sky, you click this little arrow and the gear button and say import skies from images. Here are the ones we shot. I'm going to select all of them and here they are loaded into blue skies. So it's helpful to choose something that had kind of similar cloud cover like- If you're replacing a sky on an image that is really overcast, this is kind of perfect to use where there's a lot of thick cloud cover but little specks of blue. It still looks way better than a completely white sky. Not to mention we've got to kind of match the perspective. I'm gonna go, I think with a single cloud. Another thing I'm doing is aligning the horizon towards the bottom of the photo because we don't need to see the landscape. I just leave a little sliver of it to get our perspective so I can match it up with the final photo. You want to put the clouds in the same part of the sky as they are in your source photo. Click OK and we get a few different layers in a sky replacement group. And I love that Photoshop organizes this the same way that I would if I was doing this manually. So if I alt click on the sky, you can see it just has a mask where the AI detected the edges of the mountain and the edges of Anya. And then this is the foreground lighting layer, which I don't think this is helping us at all. I'm actually gonna disable it in this case. Foreground color, same thing. These don't help us with a bright blue sunny sky. It's more for sunsets. So I'm just gonna ditch them for this. So if we look, we got a few little mistakes here. Uh, most of all, if we disable the layer, you can see the blue sky from our original photo is still shining through. So to get rid of that, I mean, there's a lot of different ways I could do it. How about, uh, I'll do a hue saturation layer. I'll select my blues. I'll expand that range so it catches some more of the cyans. And then I will turn the saturation all the way down and turn the lightness all the way up. Obviously this has affected Anya here, which I don't want. So I'm gonna use another AI tool from Adobe. This is pretty new. It's the object selection tool. And I'm gonna make it a lasso instead of a rectangle. Make sure I have the background layer selected and just real quick select everything that is behind in the sky. And if Adobe misses something, I'll hold shift and add that area back in and here. Now, if I go to the mask on my hue saturation layer and press control I, which is actually the opposite of what I want. I can press command D, deselect all of the things and then press command I again. I inverts all of the colors. So my mask is now inverted. If I show the sky again, things are mostly gone. If your sky was just blown out, you don't usually need to deal with this. I just had a little extra cleanup to do. And hey, now we're looking pretty good. But let's go deeper, make this look a little more pro. I made a mistake over here. You can see these trees are visible from the cloud photo. This was shot on a 16 millimeter lens. So I'm going to press control T and resize that background so that it's a bit more to scale of uh, the 24 mil that Anya has shot on here. And so that we hide those trees. <laughs> All right, now what's going on? This looks it's kinda okay, but it looks super fake HDR still. We need to balance the colors of this blue to what it would look like in the image. So to do that, I'm going to create a curves layer and bring up the mids. And as you can see, it's affecting the whole image. That's not what we're trying to do here. So instead, I'm gonna right click on the layer and go to create clipping mask. And now it applies the mask that is under it. So remember this sky mask, this is now being applied to our curves layer. And actually when I click alt on the sky layer, I can see there's a few mistakes here. So I'm gonna really quickly just clean these up. Even though the AI does a decent job, it can still make some mistakes and you don't want the sky kind of eating into your subject. All right, now we got no more glitches on the edges, but the fact that Anya is so bright here, like her uh, shirt is totally blowing out, makes me feel like this just is not bright enough. Like the sky would be at uh, kind of a higher level here. Um, and also it needs to be a bit more faded. So on this very top layer, I'm going to add a layer mask to the whole group and use my brush tool, make it really big with a completely low hardness turn down the opacity a lot to like one and just kind of gradually fade this up a little higher. 
And this is something you actually see in skies. It was one of the options in our sky replacement panel initially, but I'm doing it manually here just to, to kind of just tweak it by eye. There, and there's a little more of a fade. Now, I'd also say the sky is a bit too saturated for this situation. So again, uh, on my sky layer, if I create an adjustment layer over that, make sure it's got the clipping mask so it's being applied to the same place. Select my blues and turn down saturation just a little. Cool, okay, we're getting, we're getting so close. It's almost there, but there's a very big problem still, and maybe you've noticed it, it's the blur. I love bokeh, blurry backgrounds, shoot like that all the time, but it does make it a little harder to do your sky replacement. The lens optics come into effect. So not only does it become harder to cut out all of the edges of the background, but now you have to match the blur exactly with the clouds that you're using. Photoshop can do all of this for you, but just be aware of it. It's much easier to do sky replacement if everything is in focus. So on a phone, those photos, things will be in focus. Or if you stop down your aperture to something like F8, also helps. There should be a little bit of blur around that edge where the mountain and the trees meet the sky, and there's not. So to do that, we double click on the mask and we can just bring the feather up until it feels a lot more natural. Oh, that's too much. And then the other big thing is the actual sharpness of the clouds. They are completely in focus, this is not. So we've got to try to match that. Photoshop has some really powerful new blur gallery tools. They're, they're not that new anymore, I guess, but uh, I'm gonna use the field blur on this, which is um, kind of just blurs the whole image based on where I drop points. Let's see, it defaults to 15. And you just gotta kind of judge it by eye. That feels, I think, a little bit blurrier than my background. So I'm gonna bring that number down to, I don't know, 11, oh, that feels pretty good to me. Okay, then the other thing you have to match, which this photo, I don't know if it really applies, but is the noise. When you're shooting your sky photos, you wanna make sure that they're as useful as possible. So that means getting everything sharp and in focus. I'll be shooting at F8 and my ISO is at 100. So there's very minimal noise. Sometimes you have to process them later to match the source photo. So the low ISO really helps with that. The cloud photos usually are shot at like ISO 100, but sometimes, you know, your other photo, your source photo is, let's say it's ISO 800, 1600. You could just see more noise. You've got to turn it up here in the grain until it fits. Um, this doesn't really have it, so I'm just gonna, I don't know, keep it pretty low, but do make sure that they are the same in the end. And we've gotten a lot closer, but you know what? I think, I think the blur of this edge still feels wrong. And there we go. I think that's looking pretty realistic. Now, I think sky replacement photos are the most successful when they look natural. If you're trying to generate a whole image from somebody else's sky, you're not really taking the photo. I don't know, that's getting more into like composite art, but that's a thing too, I don't know. It's not what I do, but if you want to go ahead, hopefully you're a little better at it now. And hopefully you've already subscribed because I'm gonna be talking about how we color grade all the footage that we shot on this day in Resolve. It's like Photoshop for movies and free to download and I hope to see you there.